The Penrith Panthers made it 14 straight and as a result have been rewarded the JJ Gilton and Shield. But in the country's capital, Raiders Ricky Stewart could find himself in hot water with the NRL. Planets apart. That was Ricky's report of Graham Annesley. We have the head of football's response. Is it the end of the Benji Marshall era or will the Tiger tie up a future deal? Tom Dvojevic fails to finish his first game back, but State of Origin is still within reach. And the panel debate a new rule, which to no surprise, involves the bunker. Welcome back to Inside the NRL. I'm joined once again by Michael Chamis from the Sydney Morning Herald and Jamie Soward. Fantastic news we saw there in our opener, the Penrith Panthers secure the minor premiership. First time since 2003, isn't it great, gents? Yeah, it's awesome. Having uh, been there a couple of times, now the pressure starts to build. You've got that out of the way. That's the first goal of the year. But uh, this team, you can't wait to get into finals now knowing that you're, you're ready to go. What about for you, Michael? Yeah, I agree, but I think I've spoken to a few of them. They're not worried about the minor premiership. They want the big one. They want the, the premiership on the last Sunday of the year. And I, look, to be honest with you, I think they can get there. They've shown enough in the last 19 weeks to suggest they can win this premiership. Sorry, was, was last week, were you for or against the Penrith Panthers winning the premiership? I was forced to be against. Oh! Were you forced? No, I, I don't I think did, you were forced. I actually went on the uh, NRL.com ladder predictor during the week and uh, did a little pod myself on it. And I had Melbourne playing Roosters because the first week, I don't know if this team needs a week off, the, the Penrith Panthers. I know that they would want a week off to try and rest their bodies, but these are young kids you know, that are just enjoying playing. I don't know if that week off sort of halts them and maybe you start to think about that game, having been in both positions. Um, but, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. 14 in a row. You probably don't want to end that winning streak. While we're on the Penrith Panthers, though, there was an outcome uh, with Brent, Ra uh, Brent, Brent Naden sorry, and the alleged racial abuse uh, last month. Michael, what can you tell us? Yeah, the NRL's been looking into the matter since August 14th. It happened at Central Coast Stadium against the Warriors there. Eight fans were ejected uh, for alleged ra racial abuse that it was aimed towards Brent Naden. I spoke to Brent Naden today. The NRL has since put out a press release that the investigation has closed. Now, one of the players, one of the fans, sorry, uh, represented the group and spoke to Brent Naden over the phone uh, and apologised for the comments that were made. Now, the NRL has closed the investigation. Nate has accepted the apology and, and, and everyone moves on from it. I, I think everyone in that situation learns from it. You know, hats off to, to Naden for speaking up. And he said earlier today when I spoke to him that the legacy of Inglis and Adam Goods and Latrell Mitchell, having guys like that speak up in the past, inspired him and gave him the courage for him to do the same thing. So, uh, yeah, that, that matter is now closed and the closure is there for Brent Naden and hopefully for those young men that are involved, uh, the lesson has been learned. And very important that Brent Naden has accepted that apology. It's always good if the player is happy with the outcome. Now, I'm not too sure if there's any other sport in the world that likes to uh, pay out the referees in our game. They do cop it, but the latest controversy involves the uh, Canberra Raiders head coach, Ricky Stewart, over his claims that there was a lopsided penalty count in their win over the Warriors. Um, and he was pretty upset about the uh, Jack White and Sin Bin. Take a listen. Jack White and Sin Bin. Um, would have that been the same decision if it was a semi-final? Um, I hope not, because he wasn't offside. You can't make that error. That's a question for Graham. And look, Graham Annesley is a really nice man. He, he's been in the game for a long time. But in regards to rugby league, Graham Annesley and myself, we are planets apart. Planets. Thank God COVID's in, I tell you, because we won't get any more than 6,000 of these games. Yeah, pretty damning claims there. Now, Michael, if he is found... So, Gray Mannersley did speak, and we'll get to his uh, comments in a moment, but should Ricky apologise? Oh, I don't know. I, I, we're in the entertainment business. I like it. I like to see him, you know, without overstepping the mark, showing that passion, and people love or hate Ricky Stewart. That's good. That's entertainment. Like he, Those comments there... I don't think the NRL are too fast. I don't think they're as concerned as they were when Ivan Cleary made it, the comments uh, last month. So... Uh, Ricky Stewart wears his heart on his sleeve. 
he was upset. And if he's planets apart from Graham, Graham Annesley and their views on rugby league, then so be it. You know, he doesn't run the game. He can speak his mind as long as he doesn't overstep the mark. Is that right, Sam? I love it. I love it. It's I great. absolutely love it. I, yeah, I didn't mind it when Ivan... I mean, you can't bring the, the referees into question and stuff like that, but Ivan blowing the kisses. When coaches get involved, it's good for the game because it gives us content. But, I, again, I think Ricky Stewart's getting his side prepared for, for an ambush you know, in a couple of weeks. They, they can still win this competition. And uh, a couple of these things in the press conference that Jack Whiten does it every week. So the referee knows next time, oh, does he do it every week? You know, I'm not really sure. Was he offside? So he doesn't call it next time. So I love the theatre. Well done. Ah, Ricky, smart, smart. Ricky wouldn't have forgotten last year's grand final and the way it ended. No one has forgotten the way that ended, right? I think this is a little friendly reminder to Graham Annesley and the referees. Don't do us over again here. We, you know, this is a reminder of we've been done it before. But every coach does it now. Like well, every they do. coach will it's do it. It's scripted at this yeah. time of year. It's and wait for the wrestling talk to start up in the next two weeks. It oh, happens that, every yeah. year. Yeah. At, every at year. the referee's expense, gosh. Um, it was interesting though because, like you mentioned, even though it is theatre, uh, Graham honestly did prove him wrong earlier today. All I can do in these briefings on Monday is to try and determine whether the decision, a controversial decision, was in fact right or wrong. He's either onside or he's off. And now the referee and the touch judge determined that he was offside. I come here every week and I put my hand up and I say we get decisions wrong. We've just looked at uh, one that got, was wrong. We're going to look at another one in a moment. Uh, but. I'm not going to just hang the officials out to dry when we've got evidence to say that they were right. There you go. He's right. Ricky is wrong. Does um, does he have to apologise or does he get fined for these comments? No, I don't think the NRL are going to fine Ricky for those comments. I think the NRL are more concerned about Ricky throwing that bottle out the window. And there, look, <laughs> there was no one there. It's, it's fantastic viewing. That'll be a meme for a while. I, I, I encourage coaches to be themselves. We saw Craig Bellamy on the weekend with Cameron Smith and that gesture. I think the fans enjoy loving a coach or loving to hate a coach. And if you can do both, then great. You know, I don't think he's got anything to worry about. OK. All right, do some player news and we will see Benji Marshall play his final game for the West Tigers. Uh, Michael, I saw in the Sydney Morning Herald today, he's not going to hang up his boots. We should expect to see him maybe play in the future. Where do you see him? And... Yeah, well, ben Benji wants to play on. Benji doesn't want this weekend to be his last game. He's had the opportunity to announce his retirement and finish up this weekend and get the fairy tale farewell. Well, not really a fairy tale finishing the year and not playing finals, but he gets the farewell and gets the send off he deserves. He hasn't taken that up. He doesn't want to announce his retirement because he believes he can still get an offer and have a contribute to a team in the NRL next year. Unfortunately for Benji, at this point in time, the offers aren't there. The clubs. That aren't, the clubs that would need a 5-8 next year aren't showing any interest. And perhaps Benji's just hanging out to hope that in the off-season, an opening might happen there. It's a player might move on, which we've seen many times over the last few years. There are transfers late in the season. So Benji holding out hope. But yeah, my gut feel tells me this could be the last time we see Benji Marshall in the NRL. What's the driving force behind Benji? Because... If he, does he want another shot at a title? I mean, is, it, is he looking at certain teams? Because when you get to this stage in your career, I can't imagine that he's just going to sign for anyone just to keep playing. Like, it's going yeah. to be the right situation. It, it will, and, and I think it'll be a team that has to be, you know, in contention to play semi-final football. I can't see Benji going to Canterbury next year, let's say. Perhaps he will. Maybe playing with his brother might be something that entices him to Canterbury. But the motivation for Benji, from what I understand, is the fact that he's actually playing good enough to keep going. No one can question his attack. He's still got what it takes in attack. It's whether he's still got it defensively and I think that's the question mark the clubs have got in regards to Benji Marshall playing on in 2021. Would he consider Super League? I don't think so. I don't think so. Look, he's got, he's, he's got he's a young family. He's going the media. He's got, he, he'll not. have a job. He's very good in the media, yeah. Benji. He'd have a job. He, he, uh, from my understanding, he'd, if, he has, if he wants to get in the media next year, he'll have a job ready to go. So I think just Benji feels, I'm playing too good right now to give it up. And, you know, what? I don't blame him. If he believes in himself... People wrote him off before and he came back and he's been playing for, what, three or four years now at the West Tigers and doing a pretty good job. There's only one spot. It'd be Newcastle. I can't see any other club, potentially, you know, that's going to be in that Manly, criteria. maybe. Maybe Manly. Yeah, well, there's some whispers around Kieran Foran trying to get that mm. fairy tale back together again, but Newcastle, 
is the only one that's sort of on the fringe that could use a 5.8. We'll get to the casualty ward in, in just a moment, but just quickly for you, Jamie, would, you didn't get the send-off. We, um, we were speaking off-air. Yeah. So is it actually a big deal if Bendy doesn't get a send-off? I got sacked. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of times. Um, yeah, look, I think... I, I was bitter at the, the way I didn't get a send-off from St George and mm -hmm. the respect there around saying thank you to the fans and a lap of honour. I just sort of got ushered out of the club and Benji will get that respect this weekend from the West Tigers. Um, it's important. If it's important to him, then that's all it's... That's all that matters. Okay. So I think if it's important to the individual, you can do that. Penrith, you know, gave me a, a luncheon and, and said thanks to the fans. But probably the one thing that hurts me is that I didn't get to do a lap of honour at the Dragons. Yeah, OK, I'm sure. And I mean, I'm sure you're not the only one, but it would probably still have a, a hard spot in your heart. All right, moving on to the Casualty Ward, brought to you by Go Healthy Vitamins. And the, both of you are going to join me on the chat today because we did have three superstars go down. The first one in the Northern Beaches, Tom Dvojevic cannot catch a break. Brad Fittler has given him, I guess, some comfort in saying, if you're fit, you'll be the first person in my 27-man um, squad. Is that the right call? Of course it is. 100%. Yep. This, this okay. is a, a team... Like, Brad Fittler came into the New South Wales setup and has won two series back-to-back -back and, and changed the whole Blues culture. This was a culture of chop and change and you know, no loyalty and all this kind of stuff. And what Freddie's done is he's built a real culture around there of we're going to pick guys like Queensland have done and like we've been criticised for not doing, regardless of where they're at. And, and this is Tom Trebojevic perfect this year. Hasn't played any footy, goes out and injures himself first game back and now has the chance to get himself right for origin. Whether he plays or not is a different story, but Freddie is rewarding those guys that have done the job for him in the past and, and I love it. I absolutely love it. You've got to remember, this is, if he had another hamstring injury, which has been troubling him over the last two years, then I could understand the logic of, you know what, there's something seriously wrong with the hamstring, which there may well be, but it's a shoulder injury, which he should get right in time. And Tom Trebojevic in origin over the last two years, he's had fullback-like impact on that New South Wales team, playing on the wing or in the centre. Like, he's been phenomenal for New South Wales during that period. Freddie, Freddie has every right to pick him in that team, and he'll be there, and... I think Tommy would appreciate the support and may help his recovery from the shoulder injury, knowing that he's got something to look forward to. I, I think you ask Tom, he wants to play. Freddie wants to pick him. Who are we to argue? Yeah, absolutely. OK, moving on to a player who's a little younger at the Brisbane Broncos, and they did confirm that David Fafita will need surgery on a syndesmosis injury. Um, it is looking like he will miss State of Origin and not be able to join the Titans until... train for the Titans until November. If you're the Titans, are you starting to second guess your one million plus um, deal a year for the 20-year-old? Oh, not because of the injury. I think, I think at some point throughout David Fafita's tenure at the Titans, they're going to look back and think, did we pay too much? At the end of the day, they paid that much because it probably took that much to get him. So you can't second guess your decision. Is he going to be worth 1.2? I have no doubt he'll struggle to live up to that hype, but it took that much to get him. He'll have an impact. That's your signing. Now, for Queensland point of view, sorry to our Queensland viewers watching on, but any slim hope they had of winning the Origin Series is pretty much, it's pretty much gone now. Like they're, they're resting on Caelan Ponga and Cameron Munster to pull a rabbit out of the hat. And <gasps> what? What's funny, Sally? Well, they're fair players. I mean, you've named yeah, but the you, top, look at one New of the South top Wales. two five eights in the world. <laughs> they're playing against the the New South Wales fullback. team, a star-studded New South Wales team. I don't give Queensland. Much of a hope, unfortunately. Do you give Queensland a chance, do you? Listen, mate, I'll just wait. For, can we get the final series out Oh, of sorry there? for answering okay. the question. Yeah, well, the question is about Dave Fafita and will the Titans regret and signing him for $1.2 I answer that. No, they won't. Can we let Dave Fafita at least turn up in Titans gear first? <laughs> I, I think that the injury is a concern basically because you're going to get him off the back of a surgery and that's going to be rehab. It's not like he's finished the season, can bounce into the preseason under Justin Holbrook, but uh, I think Justin Holbrook could be licking his lips at, at the prospect of getting Dave Fafita in with Fasul Malawi, SASA, and getting those guys to work together as soon as possible. So uh, let's see, let's judge him halfway through next year to see if he's lived up to that hype. Absolutely. All right, and moving to the Cronulla Sharks, we did see Sean Johnson. Uh, he's out for the season, rupturing his Achilles. Now, he met with the surgeon today, but in terms of Sharks making finals, Michael, I know you said they were already the worst team to make top eight. Do they fall out after week one? Yeah, that, that, look, that record, uh, no team in the NRL era has ever made the finals not beating a team that finished in the top eight. And if the Sharks don't beat the Raiders this week, they'll create history there to become that first team. Well, that was heartbreaking watching Sean Johnson. Like, he, he went through quite a bit at the start of the year. There were quite a few knockers saying that he wasn't worth the money, that he was on the way out, the Cronulla wasted time. And he's proved everyone wrong. He's been phenomenal the last 
you know, three to four months, since basically since we came back from the COVID break, really. Uh, and to see him finish the year the way he has, disappointing for Sean Johnson, that's the end of the Sharks. I, they'll play Canberra in week one. They'll play Canberra this week and probably go down and play Canberra in week one of the finals. I, I can't see how they win that without Sean Johnson. Yeah, I was one of those knockers at the start of the year. I didn't think his form, whilst he was getting the tries, I didn't think his form was inclusive of the players around him. And I was, Britton Nakora fell out of the team because he didn't have that understanding with Sean Johnson. But what he's done last couple of months has been absolutely outstanding. Devastating to see him go down like that. That's a 12-month injury mm. after surgery. But Cronulla Sharks, yeah, you can't reward mediocrity. You know, this is why I brought up that we need a top six. You know, the, the bottom two teams right now aren't going to make it through to, to the second week. So, um, Is it mate, 12 months? Yeah, it? it's a full-on... Wow. Yeah, the way he did it, the surgery... And, and you, you can't rush it back now. Mm. This is... Yeah, this That's is. We brutal. look at Kevin Durant in the NBA. It's a full twelve-month turnaround. He's going to have to take it really slow. So, um, devastating for the Sharks. Yeah, oh. devastating for Sean Johnson, but. Uh that's it, their season was gone already. I didn't think they could win the first week, but now that just cements it. That vision too, you see him mm. drop to the ground. So heartbreaking. Okay, to other injury news, and Sean Johnson wasn't the only Cronulla Shark. Royce Hunt and Josh Dugan also facing time on the sideline. And Melbourne Storm have four men out in their final round game, hindering their finals preparation. Kenny Bromwich is one of those players. He'll have to pass HIA protocol to play the Dragons on Sunday. And that's this week's Casualty Award brought to you by Go Healthy Vitamins. It's now time to talk about the fan poll because uh, we do have a host of obviously HIAs there too. Um, it's back this time of year. So it's the annual NRL fan poll um, presented this year in conjunction with the Daily Telegraph and the Courier Mail. So midday Tuesday, you'll have a chance um, to put in your vote for the biggest names in 2020. So go to nrl.com because the voting um, will be open until Monday night, the Daily Telegraph and the Courier Mail. But gents, one of those questions is if you were starting a club, who would be the first player that you would sign? Here is a list um, that you could take your pick. Who would you pick? Oh, uh, yeah, you know Luke Keery. Wow, yeah, Luke Keery. Yeah, that's a good call. That's a good call. He's not even on that list, is he? Nah. There you go. Chad, the producer, needs to work on his yeah. list. But, I, look, I'd go with Caelan Ponga. You know I have a man crush on Caelan Ponga. I think you just build a club around him, not only on the field, but off the field as well. It just does so much for your promotion and your marketing campaigns. I think Caelan's the face of the game. If I had to pick one from that list, Nathan Cleary. But yeah, Luke Cleary for me right now would be the, the premier person to get into your, to your club, especially three-time premiership winner, has done it all and, and learnt from Cooper Cronk. You can see that in his game at the moment. So, mm. uh, But it's a fair old list. It's mm. a fair old... Harry Grant's risen up pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah. Maybe one for rookie. Mm. There you go. Mm. Yes, take your voting very Steve seriously, Crichton. NRL fans. Yeah, another one. Crichton There's plenty of them. Who you got? Uh, for Rookie of the Year. Yeah. I think Stephen Crichton held the form for the, the whole year. I think the fact that the Penrith Panthers have made the, the finals, I, I, a little bit of credit to Stephen Crichton. Great choice. All right, time for Sweet or Sour, Jamie. Yeah, look, uh, sweet or sour this week. It's sweet, uh, but a little bit sour because uh, we're farewelling one of the greats of the game and it's Darius Boyd this week, having played alongside the great man uh, who came down from the Brisbane Broncos, uh, premiership winner at the Brisbane Broncos, transformed uh, not only our game but our club and, and my game as well uh, down there during that three years at the St George Illawarra Dragons. And an absolute fantastic guy. I know that he's not everyone's cup of tea, but, but to his teammates, he was loved by everyone and uh, it's going to be really sad not to see him play because I think that... Yeah, the way that he was treated by Anthony Seabold the last couple of years and his form justified it at times, but um, the way he was treated and, and tried to be pushed out of the club I think was really disrespectful to one of the greats of the game and um, I just wish him all the best. I think he's t really turned his life around the last couple of years and I know that he's gone into that mental health space and I've been really proud of him. So, um, you know, winning a premiership always holds us together and it's going to be sad not to see him play anymore. What's your, your favourite uh, attribute of Darius Boyd? Um, that some weeks he'd come to training and wouldn't talk to you, but he was always ready to play. <laughs> yeah, some days... I, I just love the fact that he always wanted to do what was best for the team, no matter where it was, whether it was hanging out or whatever. But, yeah, some weeks he, you'd feel like he, you know, he had a tough week and he, we didn't know that he was dealing with all that stuff back then, but he always came ready to play. And, yeah, we don't win that 20 premiership without, uh, 2010 Premiership without him. Yeah, true athlete, that's for sure. All right, you two need to get to the touch screen to uh, pull apart Luke Keary tries, but you weren't the only one, Jamie Sowd, to tribute uh, the great man. Here's what the skipper at the Brisbane Broncos had to say. I know it's not the season that we wanted to end on, 
um, the way that we have. But, you know, the, the, the best thing is he gets to finish at Suncorp Stadium where it all started for him and at the club that, it, you know, he started at. So, you know, our focus is to finish strong for, for Darbs and send him out, you know, on a high at Suncorp Stadium. He's been an icon for State of Origin. He's been an icon for NRL. He's won multiple premierships. Um, you know, he's done everything in the game. And for the players coming through, you know, I've just told them to watch Darius and, and learn from him because he's ticked every box. Yeah, some lovely words there from Alex Glenn ahead of Darius Boyd's last game this weekend. At Sowie, one team who won't finish up this weekend, the Sydney Roosters. Now, Luke Curie, since coming back, has been very impressive. What have you liked most about his game? Well, he's done it in different ways since coming back. He's been excelling on that left-hand side. He's one of the best support players in the game. It was no more evident than on the weekend. Just have a look at this break right here. Isaac Liu goes through. If you just watch his acceleration, as soon as Isaac Liu punches, Luke Curie's there, straight past Sean Johnson and Britton Nakora. James Tedesco usually on the inside as well. It makes them so dangerous through the middle because a half chance gets turned into six points. Yeah, fantastic work from Luke Keary there. One thing we saw in last year's grand final about Luke Keary, he counts numbers very well and he can expose a defensive line that's not lined up defensively according to what's been thrown at them. He did it again on the weekend. Yeah, he certainly did. Josh Dugan had actually gone down and hurt his knee at the time and Luke Keary makes an effort to sprint to the other side of the field and that's where he ends up. He's just here being able to just push Cole Flanagan out a little bit. He knows he's got the mismatch with Royce Hunt at second marker and so Sifa Talakai in back retreating on that short side with Ronaldo Mulitalo. As play unfolds, he just gets in position. Connor Tracy's gone the wrong way, counts up numbers. He's already gone over there to count numbers and push them out. Silky hands out in front, passes out in front from the Roosters. Luke Keary looms up in support and scores another try. It takes a while to be, under, to be able to understand that you can go over to the other side of the field as a half, but Luke Keary right now is the main man for the Roosters. Yeah, Luke Keary, fantastic there. No Cooper Cronk. No problems for the Sydney Roosters at this point. Absolutely, Michael. I love seeing that. And Luke Curie's having a fantastic season. While you two get back to your seats, it is time for Hit or Miss. <laughs> Are you back? Good. Yeah, well, good. <laughs> that was quick. I'm impressed. <laughs> all right, first things first. All tries should be reviewed by the bunker. Hit or Miss. I'm going to go to you, Jamie. You're one excited man. I've been saying it for two years. <laughs> Seriously. The NFL do it right they just award a touchdown and then if it's a controversial one the bunker just tips them up or their control room just tips them up and says we're just going to have a look at that and all they say is that the last play is under review it lets the crowd go up as one you celebrate the try and then if there's a howler like we saw on uh, Friday night then you're able to go back and correct the mistake Michael, what are you doing? You we send look, everything up as it is look anyway. Look sad. No, it's just boring. Like, w w the game stops too much now. You want to stop for everything. <laughs> Can we not see that? Can we have another look oh, at that? I'm sorry, Sally. He literally, that is ridiculous. He literally puts his foot into touch before the ball. Look at this. And you think the game's slowing down too much. That's a grand it's final a right there. Listen to me. I don't, look at that. I'm, I, listen. You want an answer from me every week. You say I sit on the fence. I'm not sitting on the fence. That's miss for me because that's boring. I don't want to see that. I, what I want to see <laughs> is I want to see the captain's challenge put in that situation instead of the referees making a decision. Referees or a try or no try. And if the captain wants to challenge it, then I'm happy to go upstairs. We have a two million dollar bunker with 55 yeah, cameras and they can in be it, used and we can't see it. That, we can't see that his foot's in the touch. Come when on, he scored Sally. the try. You're just watching too much American sport. You know what, mate? This is the difference right now, and I say this always, but a person that's played the game... Oh, here we go. ...hasn't played the game... ...that doesn't... That wants, ...that wants to see the game not seem stopped. I want to see the right decisions made. OK, well, I think that they will take on both of your opinions. No. He's trying to fist pump. Oh, I like it. That's that's good sportsmanship. Um, but Gray Manersley did actually say today that they will consider all changes in the off-season. Nothing will be made overnight. Nothing will happen. Keep going. Next question. All right. You heard it from Michael. Nothing will happen. We've got it recorded. All right, question two. Uh, Jaden Sewer should not have been sin-binned. Hit or miss. Michael? Uh, it looked bad, but I, I say miss. I... I, I yeah, he should not have been yeah, hit. He shouldn't have been sin binned. Yes, that's right. Is that right? Is that still the your questions are confusing. He's still working he sh should not have been sin binned. Hit. He should not um, have been sin binned. Do you have want me no to read that to you one more about. time? But well, the question is, he should have been. Where did the not come from? It's really But I don't think he. Uh, no, he is. should not have been. Like, he shouldn't have been sin binned. Yeah, I know. You've confused me. Um, he should no, not he have been have. sin Yeah, agreed. So he shouldn't have. So you're. So we agree with that. Hit. Great. Um, yeah. I, and this is, again, 
He wouldn't have been Simbin if the bunker didn't intervene, which is what oh, they should Now you know what the bunker involved. That'll do, mate. Listen, <laughs> the bunker got involved like they should have got involved with that try, is what I'm saying. Okay. Um, look, when you start right down, the, the contact's not great. I thought it was a good hit at the time, but I don't think uh, with him slipping, you still have a duty of care. I understand that, but I thought it was a little bit harsh. OK. Last one. That makes me giggle. <laughs> you want the bunker, and you don't want the bunker. No, All right. I do want, what I'm saying is, yeah, I do for, want the bunker. They, they, they went in there. They should have gone in on the try as well because okay. one's foul play and one's six points. It's just, you know, it's a big change. But get Phil Gould going in to save the game. Get Jamie Soward in to save the game over the off season. One call. You've made some. You've made some pretty good calls this season, <laughs> I must say. All right. Last but not least, the NRL must look to introduce female coaches in the next five years. So we have. Obviously, seen uh, Louisa Aviki, so she was the Warriors NRLW coach, but that's the only sort of woman that we've seen in a coaching capacity in the history of our game. We've seen it in the NFL and we've seen it in the AFL as well. The you NBA, uh, Greg Popovich, who's one of the greatest NBA coaches, probably the greatest NBA coach of all time, actually has a female staffer on his uh, books, which is Becky Hammond, who interviews for NBA head coaching jobs regularly. So um, I have no doubt that the women should be uh, introduced into certain aspects of the game, whether it's a skills part or, or anything like that. Uh, we've got women analysts at the moment that do a fantastic job. We spoke to Alana Ferguson last week in pulling apart the game, so I see no reason why uh, there can't be females in, in on the coaching staff. What about for you? Yeah, I, I agree. Like, I just the wording I think is a bit disrespectful. We must have. I don't like the fact that, you know, let's put someone in for the sake of having it. But I think the game is in a situation now where it's going to happen in the next five years naturally because of the the things that we've put in place with NRLW, the Origins, the Origin series. I think a female coaching member is is with, within reach in the next five years. I just don't like to see it become. Let's just give a female a job because that's the right thing to do. They are earning the right to it, and I think it's disrespectful for all the women who are actually earning the right. Katie, is it is the first goal to have the women's state of origin or women's NRL W teams coached by women as well to try and promote through there? Because there's still a lot of men coaching there. Would you like yeah, to see I some think, more I think promotion either through or. there? I think either is great, and I appreciate that you're not just going to put a female in a position because she's a female, um, but you need to actually implement. Um, coaching and training and giving the opportunity to, to women to be yeah. part of as well. Because there's a, there's a boys club that's associated with rugby league and well, that's changing yeah. over time. So, and I think people, the, the more open they become to it is the more the discussions that we're having right now become a normal discussion. Yeah, absolutely. Because I think um, you, you need to normalise it. And yeah. you say boys club, but that's because it was always a boys sport. Yeah. Women are becoming more and more involved in a range of sports and it should hopefully just become yeah. the norm soon. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I like the answers there. Um, time for power rankings, Jamie. This week's NRL Power Rankings see the Penrith Panthers remain at the top and wrap up the minor premiership. What an impressive season for the young kids at the foot of the mountains and they've done it in different ways. They've blown teams away but their experience has also come to the forefront as well. Happy Coruscant, James Tarmow. It's probably something we wouldn't have said about the Panthers at the start of the year when you're talking experience. They obviously lack that in key positions but the ones they do have there have been pivotal to their success so it's good to see the Panthers will lift the minor premiership this weekend. Yeah, I can't wait to see them that first week of the finals. The excitement levels there for those young guys. Probably a couple of questions still to be answered how they handle you know, the Roosters and Melbourne in one, week one of the finals if they have to play them but you can see them going a long way uh, in this finals charge. The Gold Coast Titans, we feel like we talk about them every week on the power rankings but they've been exceptional the back end of this year. AJ Brimson being in career best form but they've done it by committee. You look at Ash Taylor, you look at Jamal Fogarty. I've been really impressed with what Justin Holbrook's been able to do with his team. They've been that good, Sowie, that I'm going to say that if they don't make the finals next year, because they've been so good, it's a, probably you think you're going to look at it as a failure. I think the Titans are now expected to play finals football next year. On the back of the form they've got now and the signings they've made, they're a finals contender next year. And that's always the hardest thing. You look at the Bulldogs the last couple of years, they've finished the season strong and then haven't been able to carry it into the off-season and start the next season on a positive. The Brisbane Broncos season from hell will finally come to an end this week. They play their last game. They will potentially wrap up the wooden spoon. They'll have the wooden spoon in the power rankings regardless. What a poor season for the Brisbane Broncos. Whole organisation. 
Yeah, it, it, it'll be an injustice if they win this weekend and, and give the wooden spoon back to the dogs because the Broncos deserve the wooden spoon. They deserve to be embarrassed because, as you said, it's been the season from hell. So they've been at the bottom of your power rankings for a while. I think they deserve to finish at the bottom of the NRL ladder as well. Yeah, it'll be an interesting one this Thursday. Make sure you keep an eye out next Monday for the NRL power rankings. Thank you, Jamie. All right, it's now time for Champ or Chump. I love this segment, and it's a bit of a coach's special today. Uh, I'm sure NRL fans would have seen it flood their social media, and that's, of course, when uh, Craig Bellamy gave Cameron Smith the bird. <laughs> he looked up to the coaches, box, he knew. <laughs> so the, the background behind that, Cameron Smith uh, took over his coach's 47 NRL career try tally. Uh, <laughs> decent response, right? Fair call. Yeah, I love it. I can't believe Craig Bellamy scored 47 tries. That's pretty good. That is pretty good. In, yeah. a, in 150 games as well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that was the comment he made. <laughs> that he didn't have to wait 440 games, which is unbelievable. But uh, Maybe that's what I don't know what was more rare, the, the finger or just a little bit of a smirk there. I didn't know he's... I didn't know his face actually went that way. Craig <laughs> but, uh, what a what an, uh, an amazing achievement to get this. Five times they've finished in the top two the last five years. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. I was probably surprised by both. But have you champed or chumped them? Champs. Yeah, champs. Yeah. And potentially 2020 champs. Mm, I like what you've done there. Okay. And we have already spoken about it. Ricky Stewart and throwing the water bottle. Uh, we know that he's always one for a tantrum. But, uh, gents, is he a champ or chump on this regard? He's a champ. Is he? Yeah, throwing the Mount Champion bottle, uh, Mount Franklin bottle. Mount out of Champion the bottle. <laughs> Mount Champion. Oh, that's good. Well, it works. It works. Oh, mate, it's a champ. Ricky, I love Ricky. He's passionate. You've got to love him. If there was someone in front of him, that might have been a different story. With George, was it George Burgess years ago who threw the bottle on the field or something? There was a few incidents on the sideline. He's, he's a champ. Oh, he's chumping him. Oh. Jump. That could have hit someone in the head, Ricky. Oh, here we go. But I love the press conference afterwards, so I'll say uh, champion. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Cool. We'll do that. Uh, That's a little all bit right. of both. Yeah. Sit on the fence like he does. No worries. <laughs> okay, well, that, whoa. Are you scrunching him? Yeah, I was going to throw it at Sal. We just, you know. Don't throw it at me. Okay, we'll finish the show then. Okay, okay. Well, that sort of wraps up today, but we will um, preview NRL teams, which is tomorrow at 3.55. Zach Bailey, Brett Kamali and Robbie Farah to give you the final round team list leading into the finals. We'll see eight teams, of course. Farewell, the 2020 Telstra NRL Premiership season. Mm. I'll tell you what, the players in that bubble, they want out. They are looking forward to this game. Oh, yeah. I hope that they still respect that there's competition that, you yeah, know, is still standing, so... No misdemeanors over the weekend. Yeah, do you know what we didn't mention was um, Mitch Orperson and his 303. Yeah. That was that was a huge and Chris Lawrence moment. fair final game as well. Yeah, Grace Tall off the Tigers. We could go on for a while. Oh, and um, Tim Glasby announced his yes. retirement. Correct. Okay, cool. All right, drink wise, uh, remember to vote for your try of the round at nrl.com. There will be four top tries, so don't forget to put your vote in. That's us for another week. Until we see you again, have a good one. Looking for distance. And Stephen Crichton. Almost the halfway and the offway. Clearing with space. Cleary puts the foot down. Holmes coming across. Now Brett Naden. Goodbye. Penrith get another. And out of nowhere, the Panthers cross. Well, Cleary shows a good clean pair of heels here. Broker. Here comes Tom. Up they go. But young Tom Mateo positions himself perfectly. Oh, yeah. just, uh, just overrun it. Just that fraction there that time, Tommy. Oh, AJ Brimson down the middle. Good bye. AJ Brimson goes all the way. And just like that, the Titans are back in business. The outside. Outside. The kick from Marshall here. Uh -oh. Bounces up for Justin. Oh, oh who uh -oh. sees some space. Uh -oh. Here is the Fox. Northaluma can't get to him. Harry Grant is there. He goes past Harry. Dewey gets uh -oh. the heat shot. But the Fox will not be stopped. Last play, Raiders. Right here. On the last. 
Got away from Pirin, has put the kick through. Nickel Clemson has bounced back to Whitehead. He's kicked to centre field. It's picked up by Hudson Young. What a try. It wasn't rugby league they were playing at the finish. I don't know what it was. But it's worth four points. But I'm happy if they give them eight for that. Hit Jenny yeah.